today I'm going to talk some about self-determination and self-advocacy um, for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. As for all people, people with intellectual and developmental disabilities have the inherent right to be self-determining. That is, to be people that make things happen in their lives. However, in recent history, people with intellectual and developmental disabilities have had their right to be self-determining taken away in many instances with um, a lack of opportunities to choose the jobs they want to work in, to choose where they live, to choose the activities that they recreate and participate in. However, um, through systematic advocacy, people with intellectual and developmental disabilities have really undertaken a movement to show that they can be self-determining, that they can direct their own lives, and and that that leads to positive outcomes for them and really for all of society. So when we talk about self-determination, um, we're really talking about people being the ones that are making things happen in their lives. If we look at these dictionary definitions of self-determination, it's really all about um, being people um, that are directing your own lives without compulsion or without direction from other people. Now, does that mean that there aren't other people involved, that there aren't supports and resources? Think about any of us with technology and what shapes our day-to-day -day lives. We all use supports, but we're actively involved in making choices and decisions and setting the goals for what we want to go after in life. Life. And sometimes those goals and decisions that we set and that we make may be all about things to better our community, to better our families, but we're still making those choices and decisions and being self-determining. And another key part of this is people uniting um, together as groups um, to go after what they want and need in life. So the self-advocacy movement has really been a way for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities to come together and to say that we have the right to be self-determining, we have the right to be respected, and we have the right to have what we want and need to drive what we're doing. So the self-advocacy movement has played a critical role in enabling people um, to be more self-determining and in enabling society to recognize that people with intellectual and developmental disabilities really can be and should be the people directing their own lives. Um, a common phrase used in the self-advocacy movement, nothing about us without us, really kind of emphasizes this focus on enabling people to be the people that make things happen in their lives. So how do we promote self-determination? How do we enable people to really be those that are making things happen in their lives? We focus quite a lot, and what research has talked a lot about is three areas, teaching, creating opportunities, and providing supports for self-determination. So if we think about teaching, that's all about teaching people and supporting people to effectively make choices, to know how to set decisions, to think about what it means to set a goal and go after that goal. But it's also all about creating opportunities. If we know how to make an effective choice, but we aren't given choices over where we live, over where we work, over um, the activities that we're engaging in in school, then we're not able to use those self-determined actions to really be the person that makes things happen in their lives. And without those opportunities, we don't feel empowered to do that either. And it's also all about those supports um, that enable us to take advantage of what we've learned and about opportunities to be self-determined. Supports are critical. All of us use them on a routine basis. I'm completely dependent on the technology in my life. My phone tells me where to be, what I need to do. My car with my GPS helps me navigate around the community. All of us have a need for support um, to be self-determined and to engage in these activities. So it's really for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities figuring out what those support needs are. And that's going to range. It can be communication-related supports, technology-related supports, people-related supports, and probably some combination of all of those things. But we know quite a lot that with the right supports, people with intellectual and developmental disabilities can direct their own lives in meaningful ways. So why has there been so much focus on self-determination in the past, currently, and what are we going to do in the future? Well, really, there's several reasons for this. As I've talked about, people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, as for all people, have an inherent right to be self-determining. We all have the right to be the people that are making things happen in our lives. Also, we have a growing body of research that's really telling us that being more self-determined impacts outcomes. 
For example, we've engaged in a series of studies um, working in high schools with teachers, working with students, that have really shown that when we teach students skills to be self-determining, this enables them to become more self-determined. And when we track them after they leave school, that they actually have better post-school outcomes, higher rates of employment and better employment outcomes, greater participation in their community, directly linked to having higher levels of self-determination. For example, when we worked with um, students and their teachers, in those students, we randomly assigned half of them to participate in these self-determination interventions. The rest did typical activities related to education. It was that group that participated in the interventions that had higher levels of self-determination when they left school that did better after school. And this was over 700 students where we were able to really see the power of what this can mean in students' lives. So how do we actually do this? Thinking about different models of instruction, um, an evidence-based practice called the self-determined learning model of instruction really gives us a structure that we can use to teach people how to set goals, how to go after their goals, and how to really then evaluate if they achieve their goal and then to go back in the next phase of setting additional goals. This is really all about enabling people to take agentic and volitional action. And what that means, to be volitional, essentially just means that you're able to act on your choices and preferences. You've been given opportunities to learn what it is that you enjoy doing in your life and what you want to go after, what types of jobs you enjoy, what types of living arrangements you enjoy, what things you want to learn about. So you're able to identify those things. Um, and again, this is often with support from other people helping explore these options, helping come up with creative ideas, maybe be thinking about a job that you've never thought of, but that someone else thinks, oh, this could be a good fit for you. Then it's also about being able to initiate action. So identifying the goals that you want to work on and then taking direct and concrete steps to move forward on this. And this is when we start acting agentically. We develop a plan for what we want to do. We implement that plan. We navigate around barriers that we encounter. And this can include drawing on supports to identify alternative pathways that may get us to where we want to be. And finally, after we've engaged in these actions, we really need to then think about, well, did I achieve my goal? And if I did, that's great. What's the next thing I need to be working on to continue to make progress? But also, if I didn't achieve my goal, let's think through, was it that maybe the goal wasn't actually the right goal for me? Did I learn something that maybe I'm interested in a different type of career path and I need to set a new goal to learn more about that? Or maybe my strategy for making progress about my goal or from taking action towards that goal wasn't very effective. So maybe I need to come up with a new action plan and continue to make Make progress towards the goal. But overall, the focus is going to be working through this process of setting a goal, taking action, and evaluating progress over and over, as all people do. And this is really what enables us to begin to act as a causal agent in our lives. And so going through this process, teaching students, working with young adults, working with adults to do this in all domains of life, we find that this really can effectively impact self-determination and enable people to be the people that direct what's happening in their lives. However, in thinking towards the future, we have quite a lot of research that tells us how to do this, but the question becomes, how do we really set up ways that we support people with intellectual disabilities as all people to be self-determining and do these things, to have systems, to have supports that enable this to happen. Because as this quote um, shows from a self-advocate that learned about the self-determination process, it's really all about that process of setting and going after goals because without doing anything or without doing this, we won't be able to achieve the things that we want and need in life. And so this is why self-determination is so critical and important to the lives of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities and why continuing to move forward with research on how do we do this, how do we embed this um, in all domains of life for people is critically important.